What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to have example 2.1 of Thornton and Marion 5th edition. The problem reads, if a block slides without friction down a fixed inclined plane with angle theta equals 30 degrees, what is the block's acceleration? Okay, so let's first draw this problem. So this is your inclined plane, the angle of the incline is theta and in this case this is 30 degrees and then let's uh, identify uh, the coordinates so if this is your x direction okay so let's set this is to be as our y direction so it's more convenient to align your coordinate axis along the inclined plane so that some of the forces will be uh, along those direction so if this is the block so we can see that we can identify the forces acting on this block namely the normal force and the gravitational force okay so the gravitational force is uh, the magnitude of the gravitational force is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity and then we're going to take or calculate the uh, magnitude of the normal force later so if this is your x and y coordinate axis uh, based on this x and y coordinate axis we can identify the components of your gravitational force namely this will be the y components of your gravitational force and this will be your x component of your gravitational force so if this is theta by geometry this will be theta as well this component therefore would be fg times sine theta and then this component will be fg cosine theta Okay, again, we are looking at the magnitude. We're going to talk about the uh, components later. Okay, so here we have the gravitational force Fg now uh, represented in unit vector notation as uh, Fg sine theta i hat minus Fg cosine theta j, uh, j hat okay so therefore from this equation from this uh, setup we can now uh, define or set our our equation of motion wherein the net force will now be equal to the sum of the normal force and the gravitational force okay so take note again that this uh, says or this indicates that the addition is vector in nature okay so this is the resultant of your net of your this is the resultant of the forces acting on the object and bring it to second law this is equal to m times x double dot i hat because here we indicate that the motion will be constra uh, will be constrained along the incline so that means the acceleration will be along the x direction so this is very important so that when we calculate the the equation of motion or expand or expound on this equation of motion we can set that one the the motion will be along the x-axis so anyway uh, substituting this we now have uh, f and this becomes Fn j hat plus Fg sin theta i hat minus Fg cosine theta j hat. And this is equal to m x double dot i hat. We can therefore separate the equation into its x and y components. 
Okay, so for the x component, we have mg sine theta equals mx double dots, which give us the acceleration of the block along the x component to be g sine theta. Okay, from here, we can calculate from given your theta equal 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees sine 30 degrees, that's 0.5. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so this is now equal to 4.9 meters per second squared, which is a constant. Okay, just to complete the components, Y double dot, uh, Y components will be in terms of Fn minus this is mg this fg is mg cosine theta is equal to zero so this tells us that the normal force is just equal to mg cosine theta now we're looking for the block's acceleration so this is the answer Now, we can explore more about this uh, by getting the velocity and position of this object as, as time progresses. So, we can do this by integration. And by integrating, meaning x double dot is actually the derivative of v or x dot as a function of time. Okay, so this means that we can calculate the velocity by just uh, setting up the integral here so this becomes g sine theta dt then integrating okay setting the initial condition that at time equal to zero the object started at the origin and at a later time t uh, sorry the velocity started at rest so let's say it started at rest Okay, and at a later time t, you have your velocity. So, integrating this, we now have x dot, which is equal now to g sine theta t. Then, for the position function, x dot would be the derivative of x with respect to time. So, this is integral of dx equals um, integral of g sine theta t dt so again let's say it started at origin so that means at time equal to zero the position is zero and at time later t the position is at x so this will give us this expression one half g sine theta t squared so again this is your position velocity and acceleration of this block okay so in the next video we're going to introduce an additional force a resistive force named as friction to this problem and see what will happen to the motion of your object okay but for now thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye, -bye.